Hi guys, welcome back to Acrylic Avenue with me, Jackie. And I'm here today to do part two of a four video series. And we're looking at the very, very basics of acrylic pouring. So yesterday's video was how to prep the canvas. Um, just very quickly, we sprayed the back with water to tighten the, um, the fibres in the canvas. We taped the back to avoid the paint um, creating a mess and then we've just put push pins in. So today's video is all about mixing our paints. Now it can be a bit of a minefield. What I tend to do is um, mix my paints with my pouring medium. Now I've always used Oatrol that is the European version of um, Floatrol. Now this one with Floatrol has come from Australia and you do definitely get better results with this but when ordering three of these to be delivered from Australia you are looking at over £100 so it's not cheap. This is um, you still get great results but um, you can tell the difference I see it um, this is about £40 for two and a half litres so again not cheap um, and when I first started acrylic pouring three maybe four years ago this had to be imported because it wasn't available in the UK or I certainly couldn't get it now it's a lot more readily available so I tend to stick with Floatrol or Oatrol for my pouring medium. Now if you're starting out brand new, as I said earlier, to acrylic pouring, you may want to start cheaper because you're going to make mistakes. Um, it happens to the best of us. And if you want the cheaper option, um, just frantically searching around my art room now for the glue I bought recently. Um, nothing is ever where I put it. Um, 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 um. Glue, glue, glue. Bear with me, guys. I will find it. I put it on here somewhere. I can't see it. A lot of people, when they're starting out, will use PVA glue as their pouring medium and they'll mix it with water and then they'll add that pouring medium into their paints. Now, there's so many ways of doing it. Today, just because I've got these in, um, still looking for my glue. Because I've got this in, I'm going to show you how to mix your paints with uh, the Floatrol. So I've done some already because it just becomes quite monotonous when you're listening to me. Your mixing paints is probably one step that takes the longest it's it's it can be quite um a trial really so i am still looking for the glue while i'm speaking because it is so much cheaper than um the flow trail as i've already explained so here we have got dale and rowney graduate acrylic permanent rose we've also got graduate acrylic purple i'm going to show you how to mix that one so i've done these three i'll show you how i mix them by uh, making up that purple um, in a moment we've also got pebio deco cream and this one is matte aqua green okay they are a little bit more expensive than the graduate acrylics but i do like having some of them in um, if you keep your eye on the sales, they do come up every now and then, and it is worth just buying them in. This one is iridescent silver. Let's get the pot. And that's another Pebio. High viscosity. Now, the I don't tend to put silicone in my iridescent paints. I just don't think it needs it. I try to keep that clear. And then in a moment, I'll show you to put the silicone in the paints that aren't um, iridescent. 
so we chose our 25 by 25 centimeter canvas yesterday um if you look online under i'm sure i got mine from gina de luca um i just downloaded this paint to uh what is it paint to paint ratios so if for example you've got a 25 by 25 that i've got here it actually gives you either 20 by 25 or 25 by 30. this one won't be enough paint to cover that canvas so i'd rather go over than not have enough and because i'm just going to do a basic flip cut today the total amount of paint that i need to use all together is uh, let me just check i'm on the right bit 360 grams for, so total 360 grams if i was doing a swipe which is placing the paint on the canvas and then dragging the paint from one end to the other it does use um a lot less so for flip cup which i will go through with you 360 and for a swipe 180 now when you get to the bigger canvases i do find that this is extremely um inaccurate you know they're, they're telling you to use thousands of grams of paint and it's just not needed um so i do use that with caution but i will follow it today so overall we're sort of working around the 360 grams that's going to be a little bit over because um of our canvas size we're following the 25 by 30 but we've only got 25 by 25 canvas so you've got room to drop that amount down slightly um i'm still searching for that glue it really bothers me when i lose things okay preparation prevents poor performance found it so this is a craft planet pva glue and i've ordered this because i watch an awful lot of veronica who runs me paintings and that's m-i-i -I. um she's so lovely and so adorable with her um videos she's beyond excited about everything she could just gives you a, a really good um she's just a feel-good person really so I've tried my own PVAs, I've tried round the corner as to that sort of PD, PVA and I've just not had the results. So I've bought some of this in, which is what Veronica uses, and I will use that at some point in a pour later on down the line. So you're talking a couple of pound versus 40 odd. It's no brainer really if you can get the results you need. So let's go straight into mixing this paint. So we've got iridescent silver, matte green, what do we call that one? Matte aqua green, and we've also got permanent rose. So with my cup, I'm just going to clear the scales. And if I split 360 into four, I am looking at needing about 90 grams in each. So that cup has gone on the scales. Let's just clear that. It's not clearing because I'm not working on a flat surface here, which isn't ideal at all. But if I put you back over there, you're off camera. <laughs> Come on, you can do it. There you go. Right, so if I do about 45 grams of paint, somewhere around what a mess somewhere around that mark doesn't have to be exact i've always mixed my paints with the uh, pouring medium 50 50. a lot of people i watch online do um one part paint to two parts pouring medium it genuinely is um what you feel gives you the better results if you're doing um, a swipe you need your colors slightly runnier and pr 
probably two to one with the flow troll is better than one to one but at the moment i'm just going to keep things really simple and do 50 50 um and just add a little splash of water so i've got paint in there i've got my let's just clear that sit that on there the reason i'm using this sieve is because this old troll has been sat for a few weeks possibly a month without being used and you will get lumps and clumps in it and that is the last thing you want in your painting when you are looking at selling your work so really good shake um, and you can use the end of a pair of tights if you've got a sieve like this you can use this um, I don't think I cleared that then which is really stupid but we'll go with it just let that drop through and any lumps and bumps will remain in that sieve that I can just clear off to the side whenever I'm ready let me grab my lolly sticks that are never where they should be and as you can see everything I'm using has already been used and it's quite a wasteful hobby and if you're not um into saving the planet and throwing everything away it is such a waste so everything i can wash and reuse i do Where's your hair? Vanished. you've got to constantly keep a lookout for bits of fluff and fur and You've got pets you'll never believe how much rubbish ends up in your painting let's just check we're about right so if i put that back on now it should be about 90 grams why have you stopped working scales there i need to invest in a new set really so we're 93 there not a problem we're just going to carry on as we were dump that in there i'm just going to rinse that now because if that flow troll dries on the sieve it's an absolute nightmare to get off sorry guys right we're back in business give that a mix mixing keep mixing until all the flow troll and paint is mixed together give you give the bottom a really good scrape as well because it can stick in the little grooves scrape it around the sides you can only get off what you can get off really it's, there's no point going to town on it we are there and we're not going to be able to change that so we've mixed that in really well what i'm going to do now is get it to the consistency i need it by adding little bits of paint now if you pour your paint in and you suddenly feel like you've probably added a little bit too much stick with it you haven't and it will become um, smooth and fluid again the number of times I thought I'd ruined my paint only to t find out that actually all is okay I'm not going to get into colour theory with you or colours on the colour wheel I've just flown past my shelf of paint and picked up an iridescent a matte and two regular um, paints. Let's have a look whether they are. 
my permanent rose is transparent you can see the little T there don't know whether you can or not or whether I'm just waffling on to myself so our permanent rose is transparent and our purple you'll see an S semi-transparent okay again I'm not going to start waffling on about what works well with what because it can become quite in depth and as we're just going through the very basics for absolute beginners we just want to focus on mixing our paints I should have done one with flow troll one with glue um, one with just water I don't know how that would have turned out but let's just keep it all the same now some people at this point will leave their paints to dry until not dry settle you can get an awful lot of air bubbles seeing that permanent rose there. I can't see what you can see guys so I don't know whether you'll see those bubbles or not but it's absolutely laced with them some people would leave those till the morning and let them settle overnight others would just start straight away um, I've always just worked mix my paints and work straight away but I am getting into the habit now of letting them settle. If you let them settle, double check the consistency when you do start because um, they can thicken up. If they thicken up, just another dash of water. Really, you shouldn't be using more than, I don't like to go over 20, 30% water in my total um, volume but sometimes see this metallic sorry this iridescent was really thick and I'm still not convinced it's thin enough so I've probably gone over what I should be using but um, all you can do is try it and see I'm just going to switch to a bigger lolly stick that one's not doing an awful lot really. Let's see what that does. Again, if you look at the consistency of that, it looks like it will never um, mix together. Just keep going, keep going. And it will start to settle into a fluid. That's a lot better than it was earlier. Okay. So, I've done those. They are my pore colours. What I do still need to do and have forgotten to do is my base colour. So I will walk you through the steps of adding silicone to these three. In a little while, I just want to get the base colour done. So, using that, and I need a white. Play scales or you'll be out with your measurements. Getting to the end. I don't know what the weather's like where you are, but it's blistering hot here. It's absolutely fantastic. I love it. So going back to our chart where we said we need 360 grams of paint to cover this, I suspect it would be an awful lot. Far too much. So I'm just going to eyeball it. And this is where I get all complete completely wrong. Let me just see if I've got another white that's gonna tend to get that process fed up. Honest white, this would be 
notice of the work on the basis of needing 180 grams to clear that cover that canvas half of 180 is 90 and I've already gone massively over it but white paint's really useful to have at your disposal um, again find something that's going to hold that up better. Clear that. On with your sieve, clear that. And you're looking at the same sort of amount if you're going 50-50. Which I think I'll do. I'm going to have to transfer this to a bigger cup, I think. Um, where are my sticks? Just while I'm working with white, I want to make sure I'm using a brand new one because we don't want colour adding to our white. much of that through as you can. Make sure you're scraping the underneath just to make sure you've got all you need. Not all you need but all of the ultra off. So as I said yesterday's video was preparing the canvas. So we sprayed the back, we taped the back of the frame and we put the push pins in to lift it off the surface we were working on. Today's video is all about mixing your colours and again have a have a look around on YouTube. There's so many paint pourers now these days and they've all got different ways of doing it but you'll find what works for you. One thing that really, really frustrated me to the point of me almost giving up a couple of years ago was if I watched a video that I really loved and thought, yes, I can try that, I'll copy theirs, and you think you're going to get the same outcome as they do. And they have these beautiful canvases with stunning artwork on. And when you do yours, it's completely different. <laughs> You know, your results are nowhere near as lovely as what you've seen online. And it was a hard lesson to learn, but if I could go back and tell myself one thing really useful, it would be that, yep, watch the videos, learn from them, but make your own mistakes, make your own art. Don't try and recreate anything that anybody else is doing because acrylic pouring is just so it's got a mind of its own so you'll never really manage to do what the next person's doing or the next person's creating you've got to kind of um you've got to kind of find your own strengths So I started watching videos, I first started watching videos of Gina DeLuca um, and I forget what her, her business name is, I know she's got one but I've not watched her for a while and then I found Julie Cutts from Pouring Your Heart Out and she was just fantastic and she still is. Um, but you sort of get to the point where you're looking for new and different and Julie's videos were fantastic. She was so clear and precise and made everything look so simple. Um, she really is one of these that you do want to be checking out. 
and then I found the lovely Jilly Cube, she's in Australia along with Julie. Um, and again, Jill, what I love about Jilly is she's just got this originality about her work, so she'll do what other paint pourers do, but she'll add a twist. Um, and she does bloom dips where she does a pour and then will dip. Um, I don't know where my bloom's gone. She'll dip a bloom with a little bit of water in tied and she'll dip it into a paint. Um, and it gives this lovely um, finish. Um, so yeah, she does some really, really creative alterations to her work. Um, and then you've got Olga Sobe from Smart Art Materials. You've got Molly from Molly's Artistry. Um, again, Veronica from Me Paintings, that's M-I-I. -I. She's another one that is just so creative and a real thinker outside the box. She's always got a twist on the work she produces. Um, so she's quite an inspiration at the moment as well. But watch the videos. You'll get to know who you like, which styles you prefer, and practice, practice, practice. In the early days, I would definitely suggest you work with PVA glue. Now, if you're in America or Australia and you can get, <coughs> um, dear me, what's it called? I've forgotten the name of it. Oh, glue all well that's not the name of it making that up um, leave that with me and I'll think on it it's really really difficult to get hold of in the UK um, if I can't remember it I'll add it to the, um, the video um, the blog sort of underneath this video Keep going with this white. As I said, I did do the other ones earlier so that you weren't watching five paints being mixed because it is quite traumatic after a while, especially when you're listening to my monkey voice. Um, do not put silicone in your base coat. It's really, really important. Um, I've made so many mistakes putting silicone in and what it does is really hard to explain if you've got silicone in there and you cover your canvas with it when you come to do your pour or in particular varnish it at the end where your silicone has rested on the canvas um, your, your varnish won't cover that area so you'll have gaps all over where the silicone has sat and you've tried to varnish over it, it doesn't work. So if you're really, really keen on producing cells in your work, um, let me try and find a piece that's got cells in it, bear with. If you're keen to produce cells, which you do tend to get from the silicone, um, you need to be careful, don't put it in your base coat. Not overly amazed with the colours that's on this but you can see the cells in it uh, you've got cells in cells in cells so I absolutely love it but I just wish it had come out a little bit lighter um, grab you another one very quickly this is a smaller one that I did when I was first starting out so you can see these cells all the way through and it's silicone. It's a mix of silicone and also the um, Oatrol that creates that. So I've put a very thin layer of varnish on it. And I don't know whether I'm going to be able to make you there. You can see it's covered really well. There's no gaps, no spaces where the silicone was sat. If you've done a paint pour with silicone, if you take a baby wipe or an alcohol wipe, once it's dried and give it a really, really good clean, it will take the silicone, it'll lift the silicone off and that will allow you to 
put that layer of varnish or resin or whatever it is you're working with it'll allow you to lie that down and not have these gaps of um it just looks untidy i think it should be really quite any consistency any thinner and it will just roll off the sides of your canvas and we don't want that and any thicker it will really inhibit the movement of your paints when you come to do your pour so um Titanium white, 50-50 with Oatrol and a splash of water. Matte green, that's not the right name is it? Matte aqua green, sorry. Again, you want that consistency to be really quite runny. So... Can you see the bubbles in that? Can you see the bubbles in that one? I don't know whether you are. Yeah, I think you can. Yeah, I think you can. Yeah, you can. Seeing those or not. If you're at the point where you really are bothered by them and you're working with your paint straight away, just just go over them with a torch. And once they're gone, just stir slower. Slow it right down, or else you're just going to put more back in. This purple is the same. Full of little air bubbles. Run your torch over. And it will just pop those. But if you do it and then leave your paints to settle... You run the risk of it being a lot harder and you're going to have to add more water and it's just a bit risky really. I find a lot of iridescent paints end up with a lot of air bubbles in. So I am going to leave these now to settle and we will do the actual pour either later tonight or tomorrow. That will be the third video and the fourth video will be um, the ceiling and protecting the canvas so we will be I think I'll use varnish for this one so I'll do the pour tomorrow and I'll wait till that dries which will be about a, maybe a week to ten days hopefully it'll be sooner with this weather but once it's dried I will show you how to uh, clean off the silicone and how to put a layer of varnish on. Okay, any questions pop them in the comments below. Uh, I'll get back to you as soon as I can and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for dropping by.